my name is Mary Mavenge and the currently I'm a lactation manager and a child birth or a mass instructor. And lactation involves seeing every mother individually take them through the breastfeeding process, how to latch, to position the baby, how the mother should be comfortable because for breastfeeding to be successful, both the mother and baby must be in a comfortable position. So you teach her the breastfeeding positions. Then you teach her about nutrition because she has to eat well for milk to come. So you see a mother individually from the day she has delivered until she goes home just to ensure she is comfortable and confident. Let's talk about the challenges that women experience, especially when they're beginning their breastfeeding journey. We teach especially new mothers or new couples how to prepare for the delivery. First of all, we teach them the exercises they need to do to prepare for labor, how to labor, how to deliver, and we touch a bit on breastfeeding during the class, and we also teach them how to take care of themselves postnatally. So basically those are my two jobs, lactation or breastfeeding and childbirth classes. Then back in 2014, when I was working in Nick, we had a lot of problems. Babies going home and coming back with this fear, dehydration, kidney failure, all related to mothers not knowing how to breastfeed. So the hospital decided to start a breastfeeding program January 9, 2014. So then that's when I started now the breastfeeding. Initially, it was not the passion because my passion was the sick, the newborn unit, especially the premature babies and all that. I enjoyed working in ICU. But now going to breastfeeding, I thought, what is in this breastfeeding is just putting baby on the breast and that's it. Then I realized it entailed a lot. And so eventually it became a passion and now I love it. It's very satisfying. And it's good when you see mothers going home and they come to the clinic, the baby is growing, you meet with them when they are grown ups. Yeah. Society believes when a mother delivers, Breastfeeding is automatic, but it is not. Actually, breastfeeding is a skill and an art, especially a new mother must be taught. Because it involves, it is not just putting the baby on the breast. Which part of the breast? Because there is the nipple, there is where the milk is. So putting the baby on the nipple is not where the baby is supposed to breastfeed. Because you give them the nipple, there is no milk, they bite the mother, mother gets cracked nipples, they hate breastfeeding. So you have to show them which is the right place where the baby should latch. And when the baby is latching, how does the, how does the mother hold the baby? There is a position of holding the baby so that they are able to latch well. The mother after delivery, her bones are weak, she is weak herself. She also has to be taught how to, the position she needs to take when breastfeeding. So it's a nut and a skill that she has to learn. It's not just an automatic thing. Yeah. So there are many positions. There are three major ones. There is what, what we call the cradle position, where the baby's tummy and mother's tummy should face each other like this. Then this heart of the baby comes under the mother's breast. Then she brings this hand and holds at the baby's buttocks so that now the baby is at the mother's knuckle. Then you hold the breast like this. And you're not supposed to go to where the baby is because the back is not strong. Mother's back is supposed to be straight so the baby comes to you like this. Then you hold. That is one is called the cradle method. There is again another one we call the football, the rugby position, where you can hold the baby from the side like this. So you support the head like this, then you give the breast 
like this. This is especially good for a mother who has gone through a cesarean section to avoid the scar. This is also another breastfeeding position. And it's very good because this one you look at each other. You speak to each other as you are breastfeeding. Then there's a third one where now mom and baby can lie down on the bed facing each other. So it's a tummy to tummy but lying facing each other. And again, that is also good to give a mother a break. Because especially the first month, mother is supposed to breastfeed on demand and baby should not go more than three hours. So minimum feeding in 24 hours is eight times. Yes. So you can imagine this mother waking up every three hours to sit and the back is not strong. So she can end up with a lot of backache. So having different positions is good. One time she's sitting, another time she's lying down to give her back at least a break. Why most people are fearing breastfeeding is because there's a lot of negative messages out there. Breastfeeding is so difficult, it's so frustrating. When you breastfeed, you have no life anymore. Your life rotates around the baby which is not true. As long as this mother is supported well to enjoy the breastfeeding from the world go, they choose it. But again, you know, we only give knowledge, we teach you how to do it and the importance. Because there are also consequences. If you don't want to breastfeed, let's say, you just want to start your baby on the formula milk. Then there are consequences of the formula Babies tend to grow a lot of allergies. There are many complications associated. And like the breast milk, which is a complete meal, which has antibodies for giving the baby immunity. You have quite a remarkable career that stretches to over 30 years. What has been your most beautiful experience? Kuniku is where I had the most good memories. Like I remember this one day, I used to be like uh, the in charge of Niku for many years. So this morning I came very early, by 6.30 I was already in. I used to like to go around to have uh, a crew of what is happening in the unit before they had over. So I went at this cubicle and there were, there were twins. So one of the twin babies had just been fed. And just looking at this baby, the baby, the color has changed completely from pink to blue, meaning the baby is not breathing. I looked at the machine and all the lines were flat, meaning this baby is not breathing, there is no heartbeat. Of course, we called the emergency team, the doctor came. We started the resuscitation and we resuscitated for almost one hour. We gave the resuscitation drugs, and there's a maximum dose we give. After we give the maximum dose, the doctor said, it's done. So he sat down and told us now the mother was called, of, babies had been left behind because they were premature. So mother was called from home to come very quickly. When everybody had given up, Oh, the doctor had dissatisfied this over. Something told me no. I couldn't believe or imagine when that mother arrives what she'll find. So I just decided to ask the doctor, I will give me that stethoscope. And then there's what we call the bagging, like you are trying to breathe for the baby. I just took that Abby bag, pumped, pumped, put my stethoscope on the chest. And I'm like, eh, I think there's a heartbeat here. Then I told the doctor, doctor, come, there's a heartbeat here. Then he told me, no way. That is just the effect of the drug. There can't be a heartbeat after one hour of resuscitation. Yes, I told them, no, I am convinced. So me, I kept on going, going, going. Within a few minutes, we saw on the machine now, the machine started the straight lines started going up, meaning the heartbeat is coming. 
the oxygen saturation on the baby started going up from 0 to 20. Before we knew the color of the baby started turning pink. Yeah, the challenges are, I would say, unique. My main challenges is when we lost babies. Like you'd nurse a baby, nurse for three months. And when the baby has given you hope we are all good, then one day baby just collapses and they are gone after three good months. And the mother is left with a bill of a five million and she's going home with no baby. Even trying to give psychological support to that mother, even to us, is so sad. We cried a lot with them. Yes. I think my worst challenge was the death of a baby. Yes, especially after nursing them for all. And as you retire, what are you grateful for? First of all, um, I'm grateful for learning because the experience I've had in the nursing profession over 35 years, and especially the Aga Khan, the 32 years, I have learned a lot. I came here as a young girl in the 20s. Now I'm living at 60. I've gained a lot of experience. Experience, the best teacher, knowledge is power, because as long as you have that knowledge, nobody can challenge you. You can only be challenged if you don't have the education and the experience. So I've gained a lot of experience from working with no technology to working with the technology.